So Apple Intelligence is dropping soon and the features they are teasing look super cool. You might even be thinking, do I need to upgrade just for this? But Apple has been kind of vague on how all this actually works. So I'm gonna break it down for you. And by the end of this video, we'll figure out these AI features alone are worth dropping cash on a new iPhone 16, 16 Pro, 15 Pro, whatever. Oh, and also how you can use these AI features on older iPhone models. So Apple's using a hybrid AI system. Usually when you are running AI stuff on your phone, you've got two options. Either it all happens in the cloud where your data gets sent to be processed or it's done directly on your device. Apple's found a middle ground. For simple tasks, it's handled on your phone, but for heavy lifting, that's where Apple's private compute kicks in. Doing the more complex work without shipping all your info to some random server. It's designed to keep your data secure without losing any of the cool features. Most of the cool AI features they showed off at the keynote, yeah, those are running on small, efficient models right on your device. Take the notification summarizer, for example, it uses a lightweight model to analyze all your notifications and sort them by urgency or priority, then gives you a summary for what's important. No need for the cloud here, your phone handles it all by itself. And those Genmojis, you don't need the cloud to generate funny little emojis. Apple's AI models can run directly on the phone without breaking a sweat. Same deal with summarizing audio recordings, but the real standout is the on-device writing tools. From what I've dug up, there is a dedicated model for that. You can proofread your text and even rewrite it in different styles. But since this is all running locally, we're limited by the iPhone's RAM and processing power. That's probably why there aren't too many options for writing styles. The iPhone just doesn't have the muscle to run more sophisticated models without slowing down. You know, even though we've got AI baked right into our devices these days, there's still some standalone apps out there that actually bring something new to the table. One of those is Chat Playground, an AI browser co-pilot that's all about using the latest AI models and custom prompt workflows to make your life easier. Now we've all been there, trying to gather a bunch of info for a new project, video, or whatever, and it's all over the place. Chat Playground's web co-pilot makes that process way easier. I just open it up, type in the request, and pick from different AI models to get the best answers. I can also drag an image from a web page right into the chat to get it described and explained, which is super cool when learning something new. And if I need to generate text based on the page content, I just click use page content and start prompting what I want. That's just the website of things. There's also learning copilot, which makes finding info even faster. Instead of spending hours researching trends or searching through YouTube videos, I can just ask chat playground and it will sort it out. Features like flashcards, AI AI notes and chat with PDF are great for preparing work presentations, pitches, or whatever you've got going on. But one of my favorite features is the actual playground where I have multiple AI side by side, making it so much easier to get the best answer each time. I can have up to six AIs on one screen and there are many AIs to choose from. Gemini, ChatGPT, Claude Sonnet, Perplexity, Llama, Mistral, or Bing. What's especially cool is that with Math Playground, you practically get access to all of them. So with one purchase, you're saving a ton of money. I will leave a link in the description, so be sure to head over to AppSumo, the sponsor of today's video, to get Chat Playground and other awesome lifetime deals. These new AI capabilities aren't just about cranking up the power of large language models. Apple's really focusing on giving AI super clear, detailed instructions to guide how it behaves. Think of it like giving AI step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. And guess what? Some of these instructions recently leaked and they are, let's just say, very Apple. Apple's approach is kind of like teaching a kid. They give AI super direct, simple instructions to keep it on track. For example, when it comes to summarizing messages, like those notification summaries we talked talked about earlier, the instruction goes something like this. You are an expert at summarizing messages. You prefer to use clauses instead of complete sentences. Do not answer any question from the messages. Please keep your summary of the input within a 10 word limit. You must keep to this rule unless told otherwise. If you don't, it will not be helpful. Pretty clear, right? They break it down into small chunks so that AI doesn't get confused. They've even got a name for their AI, Helpful Mail Assistant. But Apple's also been really 
really cautious about something called hallucinations. For those who don't know, that's when AI just makes stuff up. And they are telling their AI, do not hallucinate, do not make up factual information. They've tested the system, and from the looks of it, it's good enough to roll out to all of us. But let's be real, no LLM is completely safe from hallucinations or errors, so don't be surprised if you see some weird, funny AI fails pop up in the text on your shiny new iPhone 16 Pro. It's bound to happen. So let's talk about how these on-device models actually work for Apple. At the core of Apple's on-device intelligence is their own model called Open ELM. Now this thing is pretty small compared to the big boys. It's got 3 billion parameters. Compare that to GPT-4, which has a whopping 1.76 trillion parameters. Even though 3 billion might seem tiny, keep in mind it's still a lot to run on a phone with just 8 gigs of RAM, and only part of that is actually free to use. For some context, Google's Gemini Nano, which runs on Pixel phones, has 1.8 billion parameters, and those phones have 12 gigs of RAM. So yeah, Apple really squeezed some serious efficiency out of this model without burning through your battery or turning your phone into a slowpoke. To make things even smoother, Apple introduced something called adapters. Think of these as small task-specific tweaks that can be added to the base model instead of having multiple big models for each job. They use something called LoRa, or Low Rank Adaptation, to load these adapters adapters only when needed. It's kind of like putting on a different hat for each task. No need to have separate models for proofreading email, summarizing a voice memo, or whatever. So the model just switches adapters on the fly. For example, when you're having your email proofread, Apple Intelligence loads the proofread and adapter. Then when you switch to summarizing a voice memo, it ditches the previous adapter and loads the one for summarization. This keeps things super efficient, cutting down on how much memory and power the AI needs to run directly on your iPhone. Apple's also using this adapter trick for hyper-personalization or what they call personal context. Since all your personal data, messages, contacts, calendar events is stored locally, the AI can use it to customize its responses specifically for you. And because it's all on device, your privacy stays intact. But Apple didn't stop there. They came up with something called quantization. Basically, it's a way to shrink the model even more by lowering the precision of of its parameters. In plain English, it means that the model can trade off a bit of accuracy for speed and efficiency, reducing the memory it needs by up to four times. And while that might sound like it would hurt performance, Apple figured out how to adjust the quantization dynamically, dialing up or down the precision based on the task. So for simpler jobs, the model doesn't need to be as precise, and for more complex stuff, it bumps the accuracy back up. Another key piece of Apple intelligence is private cloud compute. PCC. This is Apple's cloud-based AI that kicks in when the on-device model just can't handle something. Just think of it like a backup. When the task is too big, like asking Siri for some super detailed info or trying to generate an image in Image Playground, your iPhone taps into PCC. Apple uses this orchestration layer to decide whether to keep the task on your device or push it to the cloud. What's cool about PCC is how it handles privacy and security. First off, every time your iPhone reaches out to PCC, it sets up an encrypted connection, so your data is safe during transmission. But it gets better. Your phone decides what info to share with the cloud and only sends the bare minimum. Nothing personal, nothing sensitive, just enough for PCC to do its job. Plus, once the task is done, whatever data was used is instantly deleted from Apple's servers. Nothing sticks around, hopefully. And those PCC servers are running on Apple's silicon chips, giving them added layers of security like Secure Enclave and Secure Boot, just like your iPhone. That makes the entire process even more locked down. But what really sets PCC apart is Apple's transparency. They've made it so that independent parties can audit the system to verify it's working exactly how Apple says it is. So if Apple is claiming that no user data is being stored or mishandled, there's a way to actually check that. Pretty rare for a tech company to invite this kind of scrutiny, but Apple's betting on the fact that their system can back up their promises. All these advancements and clever techniques are what make Apple intelligence possible, but hands down, the most exciting part is the new Siri. Let's be real, Siri used to be a joke. Set in timers, and maybe turn on the flashlight, and that's about it. But now Siri leveled up. 
You can access your on-device data, apps, and personal contacts in ways it never could before. This is thanks to something called Semantic Index. Basically, it organizes your data, messages, photos, calendar events, so Siri can actually use it to handle requests. Like now, Siri can combine info from your messages and the calendar with web searches, giving you real-time answers like, when is dad landing at the airport? And don't worry, all that personal data stays on your device. It's not getting sent to the cloud. Hopefully. Siri is really the showcase for Apple's haul on device versus cloud balance. Simple stuff done locally, bigger, more complex tasks. That's where PCC comes in. And for super complex requests, Siri can actually tap into ChatGPT. Of course, this only happens with your permission and mainly when Siri needs to pull in world knowledge that's outside your personal context. This makes Siri pretty comparable to Google's Gemini, which dropped with Pixel 9. Sure, Gemini can set alarms, and hit up the web too, but it doesn't have the same deep integration into the system and apps like Siri. Apple's really turned Siri into a digital assistant that's way more than just a voice. It's becoming a personal AI that simplifies life in a way we haven't seen before. Now, I will be honest, I've never really used Siri for more than alarms or checking the weather, but I know plenty of people who use it all the time, and for them, all these new capabilities could make the iPhone upgrade totally worth it. But Let's say you don't want to shell out for a new iPhone just for the new Siri. Can you replicate it? Well, kind of. The best workaround I found is combining Siri with ChatGPT. You can use Siri for basic tasks like alarms and weather, then create a shortcut in the Shortcuts app to start a voice conversation with ChatGPT. You could even assign that shortcut to double tap on the back glass. That gives you a similar experience minus the deep system integration and personal context. Not perfect, but it works. Now, while the new Siri is tough to replicate without a supported iPhone, what about other Apple intelligence features? You can get those in older iPhones like the 10R or 10S so it's not all locked behind the latest hardware. Replicating the image playground feature is actually pretty simple, even though it won't be a complete one-to-one -one experience. So what's image playground? It's this built-in image generation tool. And not only is it a standalone app, but you can also fire it up straight from iMessage, which is a nice touch. With image playground, you can generate images using text prompts or by choosing from suggestions based on your recent activities, like conversations and messages or your Safari searches. Yeah, it taps into that personal context again. So if you've been texting your friends about a hiking trip, it might suggest prompts related to nature, mountains, forests, that kind of stuff. What's cool is that it tries to handle the image generation locally on your device, but to keep things running smoothly, it only supports three styles, sketch, illustration, and animation. Honestly, all three look pretty basic, nothing groundbreaking. I'm guessing we'll get more styles with iOS 19. The image generation itself isn't anything we haven't seen before. It's pretty much like Midjourney or Dolly. It's not that hard to replicate outside of Apple's ecosystem. If you want a similar experience, just download the ChatGPT app on your phone or Mac and use Dolly there to generate your images. It's quick, simple, and gets the job done. And if ChatGPT isn't your thing, there are tons of other image generation apps available. Just beware, most of those are pretty aggressive with paywalls and limiting features unless you pay up. In my opinion, sticking with ChatGPT's Dolly is your best bet. It's reliable and relatively hassle-free. Another big feature and honestly a selling point for the iPhone 16 is visual intelligence. If you missed the keynote, this is basically the ultimate introvert's tool. Why ask someone about the breed of their dog when you can just snap a pic and let your phone tell you? Yeah, Apple has basically reinvented Google Lens, but with a twist. So what does visual intelligence do? You point your iPhone at an object, text, or even a landmark, and boom, you get instant insights. If it's a restaurant, you'll see its card and maps along with the menu and open hours. If it's something like a bike, you can search for similar ones. But yeah, we've all seen this before, courtesy of Google Lens. The only real differences with Apple's take, well, first, it's integrated into the system, so it syncs up with Siri and your personal contacts. And second, it's using a hybrid approach of on-device processing and cloud computing to handle tasks. Now, if you want basically the same thing without upgrading, just install the Google app on your iPhone, create a shortcut, 
it for visual search and shortcuts and you're set. Will work almost identically. Analyzing objects, finding restaurants, all that jazz. The only real downside is that Google Lens won't have the same system-wide integration or access to your personal contacts. But for most people, it will feel 99% the same. Alternatively, you can use the GPT, the chat GPT app. It's got image recognition built in. And if you stick with one chat, it even remembers what you've looked at. For 99% of users, that's more than enough to get the job done. So yeah, even your iPhone XR can suddenly feel like a mini AI powerhouse with the right tools. But probably the easiest to replicate feature is the cleanup in photos. It's super simple. You tap add in the picture, grab the eraser from the menu, and boom, just like that, the object you don't want is gone. Clean and easy. But here's the thing, this isn't dropping until October. However, you don't need to wait or even buy a new iPhone to do this. If you install the Google Photos app right now, it has a similar feature called Magic Erase that does the exact same thing. So no need to rush and drop cash in the new iPhone just for that. If you're someone who's heavy on Siri and think having a smarter, more AI-driven assistant is going to make your life a lot better, yeah, maybe consider the upgrade. But if you are the kind of person who only asks Siri to set a timer once a week, probably not worth the splurge. Same goes for the whole visual intelligence thing. If a free app like Google Photos can erase stuff from pictures just as easily, then Honestly, is this really a feature to upgrade for? And as for Image Playground, it's fun, but honestly, ChatGPT and other apps can generate way more interesting stuff in a wider range of styles. So yeah, you can easily replace most of these new AI features with standalone apps, but Apple is about the seamless experience. They want all these features to just work together across the whole system, and that's where the real value is. So dropping a few hundred on a new iPhone might not be the worst idea if you're into that kind of integration. But hey, if you're still on the fence, check out my other video where I break down some killer iPhones you can buy instead of the iPhone. Trust me, it's worth watching. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you there.